Daily Reading Through the Bible, Week 8, Day 4, Leviticus chapters 19 through 20, Hebrews chapter 7. The scriptures quoted are from the NET Bible. NETBible.com, copyright 1996 2019, used with permission from Biblical Studies Press, LLC. All rights reserved. Leviticus 19. The Lord spoke to Moses, Speak to the whole congregation of the Israelites and tell them, You must be holy, because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Each of you must respect his mother and his father, and you must keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols, and you must not make for yourselves gods of cast metal. I am the Lord your God. When you sacrifice a peace offering sacrifice to the Lord, you must sacrifice it so that it is accepted for you. It must be eaten on the day of your sacrifice and on the following day. But what is left over until the third day must be burned up. If, however, it is eaten on the third day, it is spoiled. It will not be accepted. And the one who eats it will bear his punishment for iniquity because he has profaned what is holy to the Lord. That person will be cut off from his people. When you gather in the harvest of your land, you must not completely harvest the corner of your field, and you must not gather up the gleanings of your harvest. You must not pick your vineyard bare, and you must not gather up the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You must leave them for the poor and the resident foreigner. I am the Lord your God. You must not steal, and you must not tell lies, and you must not deal falsely with your fellow citizen. You must not swear falsely in my name, so that you do not profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You must not oppress your neighbor or commit robbery against your neighbor. You must not withhold the wages of the hired laborer overnight until morning. You must not curse a deaf person or put a stumbling block in front of a blind person. You must fear your God. I am the Lord. You must not deal unjustly in judgment. You must neither show partiality to the poor nor honor the rich. You must judge your fellow citizen fairly. You must not go about as a slanderer among your people. You must not stand idly by when your neighbor's life is at stake. I am the Lord. You must not hate your brother in your heart. You must surely reprove your fellow citizen so that you do not incur sin on account of him. You must not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people. But you must love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. You must keep my statutes. You must not allow two different kinds of your animals to breed together. You must not sow your field with two different kinds of seed. And you must not wear a garment made of two different kinds of material. When a man goes to bed with a woman for intercourse, although she is a slave woman designated for another man, and she has not yet been ransomed, or freedom has not been granted to her, there will be an obligation to pay compensation. They must not be put to death, because she was not free. He must bring his guilt offering to the Lord at the entrance of the meeting tent, a guilt offering ram, and the priest is to make atonement for him with the ram of the guilt offering before the Lord for his sin that he has committed and he will be forgiven of his sin that he has committed. When you enter the land and plant any fruit tree, you must consider its fruit to be forbidden. Three years it will be forbidden to you. It must not be eaten. In the fourth year, all its fruit will be holy, praise offerings to the Lord. Then in the fifth year, you may eat its fruit to add its produce to your harvest. I am the Lord your God. You must not eat anything with the blood still in it. You must not practice either divination 
or soothsaying. You must not round off the corners of the hair on your head or ruin the corners of your beard. You must not slash your body for a dead person or incise a tattoo on yourself. I am the Lord. Do not profane your daughter by making her a prostitute, so that the land does not practice prostitution and become full of lewdness. You must keep my Sabbaths and fear my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Do not turn to the spirits of the dead, and do not seek familiar spirits to become unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. You must stand up in the presence of the aged, honor the presence of an elder, and fear your God. I am the Lord. When a resident foreigner lives with you in your land, you must not oppress him. The resident foreigner who lives with you must be to you as a native citizen among you. So you must love the foreigner as yourself, because you were foreigners in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. You must not do injustice in the regulation of measures, whether in length, weight, or volume. You must have honest balances, honest weights, an honest ephah, and an honest hin. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You must be sure to obey all my statutes and regulations. I am the Lord. Leviticus 20 The Lord spoke to Moses, You are to say to the Israelites, Any man from the Israelites, or any of the resident foreigners who live in Israel, who gives any of his children to Molech, must be put to death. The people of the land must pelt him with stones. I myself will set my face against that man and cut him off from the midst of his people, because he has given some of his children to Molech and thereby defiled my sanctuary and profaned my holy name. If, however, the people of the land shut their eyes to that man when he gives some of his children to Molech, so that they do not put him to death. I myself will set my face against that man and his clan. I will cut off from the midst of the people both him and all who follow after him in spiritual prostitution, committing prostitution by worshiping Molech. The person who turns to the spirits of the dead and familiar spirits to commit prostitution by going after them. I will set my face against that person and cut him off from the midst of his people. You must sanctify yourselves and be holy, because I am the Lord your God. You must be sure to obey my statutes. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. If Anyone curses his father or mother, he must be put to death. He has cursed his father or mother. His blood guilt is on himself. If a man commits adultery with his neighbor's wife, both the adulterer and the adulteress must be put to death. If a man goes to bed with his father's wife, he has exposed his father's nakedness. Both of them must be put to death. Their blood guilt is on themselves. If a man goes to bed with his daughter-in-law, both of them must be put to death. They have committed perversion. Their blood guilt is on themselves. If a man goes to bed with a male as one goes to bed with a woman, the two of them have committed an abomination. They must be put to death. Their blood guilt is on themselves. If a man has marital relations with both a woman and her mother, it is lewdness. Both he and they must be burned to death, so there is no lewdness in your midst. If a man has sexual relations with any animal, he must be put to death, and you must kill the animal. If a woman approaches any animal to copulate with it, you must kill the woman, and the animal must be put to death. Their blood guilt is on themselves. If a man has marital relations with his sister, whether the daughter of his father or of his mother, so that he sees her nakedness and she sees his nakedness, it is a disgrace. They must be cut off in the sight of the children of their people. He has exposed 
his sister's nakedness. He will bear his punishment for iniquity. If a man goes to bed with a menstruating woman or uncovers her nakedness, he has laid bare her foundation of blood, and she has exposed the fountain of her blood. So both of them must be cut off from the midst of their people. You must not expose the nakedness of your mother's sister or your father's sister. For such a person has exposed his own close relative. They must bear their punishment for iniquity. If a man goes to bed with his aunt, he has exposed his uncle's nakedness. They must bear responsibility for their sin. They will die childless. If a man has marital relations with his brother's wife, it is indecency. He has exposed his brother's nakedness. They will be childless. You must be sure to obey all my statutes and regulations, so that the land to which I am about to bring you to take up residence does not vomit you out. You must not walk in the statutes of the nations which I am about to drive out before you, because they have done all these things, and I am filled with disgust against them. So I have said to you, you yourselves will possess their land, and I myself will give it to you for a possession, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, who has set you apart from the other peoples. Therefore you must distinguish between the clean animal and the unclean, and between the unclean bird and the clean, and you must not make yourselves detestable by means of an animal or bird or anything that creeps on the ground. Creatures I have distinguished for you as unclean. You must be holy to me because I, the Lord, am holy, and I have set you apart from the other peoples to be mine. A man or woman who has in them a spirit of the dead or a familiar spirit must be put to death. They must pelt them with stones their blood guilt is on themselves. Hebrews 7. Now this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, met Abraham as he was returning from defeating the kings and blessed him. To him also Abraham apportioned a tithe of everything. His name first means king of righteousness, then king of Salem, that is, king of peace, Without father, without mother, without genealogy, he has neither beginning of days nor end of life, but is like the Son of God, and he remains a priest for all time. But see how great he must be, if Abraham the patriarch gave him a tithe of his plunder, and those of the sons of Levi, who receive the priestly office, have authorization according to the law, to collect a tithe from the people, that is, from their fellow countrymen, although they too are descendants of Abraham. But Melchizedek, who does not share their ancestry, collected a tithe from Abraham and blessed the one who possessed the promise. Now, without dispute, the inferior is blessed by the superior, and in one case tithes are received by mortal men while in the other by him who is affirmed to be alive. And it could be said that Levi himself, who receives tithes, paid a tithe through Abraham. For he was still in his ancestor Abraham's loins when Melchizedek met him. So if perfection had in fact been possible through the Levitical priesthood, for on that basis the people received the law, what further need would there have been for another priest to arise, said to be in the order of Melchizedek, and not in Aaron's order? For when the priesthood changes, a change in the law must come as well. Yet the one these things are spoken about belongs to a different tribe, and no one from that tribe has ever officiated at the altar. For it is clear that our Lord is descended from Judah, Yet Moses said nothing about priests in connection with that tribe. And this is even clearer if another priest arises in the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become a priest not by legal regulation about physical descendant, 
but by the power of an indestructible life. For here is the testimony about him. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. On the one hand, a former command is set aside because it is weak and useless, for the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, a better hope is introduced, through which we draw near to God. And since this was not done without a sworn affirmation, for the others have become priests without a sworn affirmation, But Jesus did so with a sworn affirmation by the one who said to him, The Lord is sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. Accordingly, Jesus has become the guarantee of a better covenant. And the others who became priests were numerous, because death prevented them from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently, since he lives forever. So he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. For it is indeed fitting for us to have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separate from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need to do every day what those priests do, to offer sacrifices first for their own sins, and then for the sins of the people, since he did this in offering himself once for all. For the law appoints as high priests men subject to weakness. But the word of solemn affirmation that came after the law appoints a son made perfect forever. The next daily reading through the Bible, week 8, day 5. Leviticus chapters 21 through 23. Hebrews chapter 8. The scriptures quoted are from the NET Bible. netbible.com, copyright. 1996-2019, used with permission from Biblical Studies Press, LLC, all rights reserved.